Uh, Studio Cruise is a consultancy which I have run since I left Sun Microsystems about 10 years ago. Studio Cruise specializes in the visualization of complex information, primarily three-dimensional information for litigators, for engineers, for architects, for inventors, and for organizations. I'm going to talk for 10, 15 minutes about Google Earth and show how it could be useful in some specific circumstances to projects like <coughs> team, particularly extracting data from the knowledge base, which is resident here within individuals rather than organizations or companies. Let's talk a bit about Google Earth first. Google Earth is a virtual globe, map, and geographical information system. It was originally called Earth Viewer, and it was created by Keyhole, a company that was acquired by Google in 2004. It maps the Earth by the superimposition of images from satellite imagery and aerial photography onto a GIS 3D globe. And the globe incorporates terrain information, so it is three-dimensional in our science. closely associated with Google Maps, which Jo Marie also mentioned earlier. And the two can exchange information, They're very closely related, as I say. And also with the 3D modeling program Sketching, which is another, pro another company that Google bought a few years ago and has incorporated into its uh, into its, its specs. In an email to me yesterday, Christian Adams, who was a Google developer, inside Google, who I work with on several projects, said that the current download total is 700 million downloads and installs of Google Earth. It is a huge infrastructure, a huge database out there, and one that, in my opinion, hasn't been sufficiently taken advantage of. Why are so many, why are so many people downloaded Google Earth? Well, let me show you. Open up a Google Earth file. <coughs> First of all, Google Earth has an engaging and intuitive interface. It's very similar, in fact, to the famous photograph of the Earth rising over the moon that was taken in 1968. By you engage with the planet, you feel in control of it, you can zoom in on any part of it, and you can extract data from it. It empowers you and it invites you. Secondly, Google Earth, as in this example from the US Geological Survey site, has a unique combination to present information with which you can interact intuitively in real time and also present that information as a preset tool. You can be taken along a timeline, you can be presented with information, and you can stop at any point and look around and explore, then continue the tour, or not continue it as you, as you choose. The basic technology is fairly simple, and a lot of data can be uploaded by volunteers without much technical training. So in that sense, it's similar again, as Joe Jewelry mentioned, to, Wiki, to Wikipedia, which is a widespread phenomenon of our times, which is the extraction of a usable, large body of information, generally accurate information, because it's peer-reviewed, from people on the ground, from the grassroots, as it were. People are very willing to contribute their time and their energy to mass projects. One example is the Linux operating system, which in many ways is better than the commercial alternatives of the Apple operating system or Windows. Linux is developed and updated entirely by volunteers. It's quite a remarkable phenomenon. Same, as I said, is true of Wikipedia. This phenomenon can be expanded into other areas, and particularly, I think, into a very clearly defined cultural, geographic, regional area, such as 17, Congressional District 17. We have a distinct character. It doesn't all come from the geography, it doesn't all come from the history, but a large part of it does. It's part of our brand, and it's very valuable, and we need to make use of it. I'm going 
going to show you a quick example that I put together the other day of how this might happen. This is on the Studio Cruise website. It's not actually available from the main page. It's a separate page, Project Titan 17, if you want to look at it. And this is an example of Google Earth in an API, an application programming interface, which is a means for Google Earth to be played inside a browser. Most browsers will accept the API. I believe that, uh, I believe that Safari won't, but Chrome will, Explore will, Find. This means that people do not have to download and install Google Earth independently. When the page comes up, the browser will say, you don't have this plugin, do you want to install the Google Earth plugin? You click OK, Google Earth will handle everything else for you. It will take a few minutes, it's a fairly chunky download, it's about 10, 12 megabytes. But you can walk away, get a cup of coffee, come back, that's all. This is an example of a very simple way we can embed buttons in the web page. They can also be included in the tour. That's a little bit more JavaScript work. I don't have time for that. So let's enter the tour. That basically means loading the tour into the interface. And then we can either press play the tour or we can press the button. Here, here we have examples of a screen overlay. And we also have examples of a ground overlay. This, in fact, is Project 17 Congressional District, as you're probably aware. And this can be explored, as I said, and appreciated independently of the tour itself. Let's continue the tour. Screen overlay, explaining what it is. Now we're zooming into Santa Cruz, and the model has to download from Google Earth, so again, I'm gonna pause. We don't have a very fast connection here. <coughs> <laughs> It'll come in instantly. It'll be like and what we're seeing here is probably some of you recognize mm -hmm. downtown Santa Cruz. I'm going to show you something rather remarkable. As we zoom in, and bearing in mind that we have a slightly slow connection, which will be improved next month, you will see three new buildings. Start to appear. Yeah. These buildings did not exist two or three months ago. I know because I'm constantly on Google Earth. I do projects in it. I I, uh, I keep keep updated with what's what changes are in the local industry. And these buildings didn't, didn't appear three months ago in Google Earth. These were created at very low resolution by a local volunteer. And I wish actually we did have a faster connection right now because you would see the whole of downtown from the end. It's actually quite an interesting exercise if you have time on your own machine with a faster connection. It's an example of what volunteers will do with this very intuitive, very engaging, very flexible, and very accessible interface. And you can see... Stay, stay out there. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. You didn't mean that the building, the, you would say that the 3D image didn't exist to the rest of the building. Yes. The building itself existed. Oh, the building existed. Oh, yes. We have been able to build these things for decades. <laughs> yeah. 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 I just wanted to check. I, I said I thought this was the central person in building anything. <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. All right. I, uh, that's why I wanted to ask. Did you mean the image? The Lava the here site along here has been under development supposedly for about 10 years. Wow. One of my first jobs as an independent consultant was building a three dimensional model for Barry Swenson mm -hmm. Builders for a planning inquiry. It's still going through planning and consultation for a while. So, all of these buildings that are popping in now, yes. uh, this was all done by some volunteer. This members. was all done by a local volunteer who put his time into this for no reward whatsoever. And as I say, if we had a faster connection, you'd see the whole of this in the Anyway, I'll, I'll move past this. But it's an example of what volunteers will do, given the incentive of this particular interface. We're now going to have a look at Baranka. 
near Lima in Peru. And again, I'm going to pause the tour if you just come in. These are buildings which were created by a local attorney, not a specialist in modeling or animation or geographic data by any means, but he created a series of buildings of a historic part of this town, which won a major award, which was awarded by Google. So this is a worldwide, not just a local film. People want to contribute to their community. They like seeing feedback. They like getting approval from their peers. They like getting public recognition of their effort. And yeah, this again, I think it's something that we may have to wait for the next month to see. So I'll show you now finally one example of how this could be used for Project 17. Here is the Project 17 outline. And in the middle, we've got an icon, an icon which is fairly large. It has a level of detail property attached to it. So if you get within a certain distance, it disappears. And this icon is pointing towards actually this particular This particular building can have what's called a balloon attached to it. Photographs, logos, web links, emails, further information. This, everything in fact that the connectory will provide can be placed upon a balloon in Google. And this can then be used interactively, both to get information about a particular operation, to get overall views about a particular area, how many institutions are there like this area, and also to input data yourself, it can be interrupted. So this, this is part of the value of Google Earth. So this is a way, would be a way of, I mean, these would be the database we were just looking at, John Marie, this would be a way of mapping. Exactly. Mapping. Mm -hmm. Yes. And let's go back to the USGS website. This is quite remarkable. It's a simple download, but this is updated virtually in real time. If we look at, well, let's look at the globe there. It's a wonder that so many American kids are still geographically in the area. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Okay, well, we had a quake here, mm -hmm. and that was on the 21st. Let's find out a little bit more about this. Okay, our pops our information balloon. February 21st, let's go to the website. We go to the website, slides in from the side, very fast and easy. Gives us details of the magnitude, date, time, location. We've even got the waveforms on the sites for that. This is from two days ago. There are also incidents here, probably from yesterday and maybe even from today. This is being downloaded in as I say, virtually real time from the server on the USGS website. So information presented by Google Earth can be not only accurate, comprehensive, and sorted by levels, it can also be almost immediate. Is it more real time first than Google Maps? <coughs> I couldn't say it is, because it's the same basic technology, but I would say they're probably comparable. That you're talking about a SQL file on a server, or even an Excel file, and the information is taken from that file, pulled into the tour, as soon as the next person opens the tour. Let me talk again quickly about the available, accessible technology in, in, uh, in Google Earth. The API in the browser is probably best controlled by the developer, it's JavaScript and it's HTML. It's pretty basic stuff. This is an established technology. The KML tours, which are independent of the API, the API uploads the KML tour. Those, again, are probably best controlled by a professional team, but they use XML language. XML is very basic natural language coding. 
volunteers contribute data to the XML through Excel, through SQL, through DAE model files, through YouTube videos. YouTube videos can be embedded in, in, uh, in balloons. JPEGs and PNG files. And finally, the online databases, again, can be AML and Excel. All these technologies are scalable. They're robust. They're modular and economic. There's very little investment required. They can be contributed to by very many people, particularly in this area. Each person can be responsible for a small subset, and they're self -contained. So one of the things you're talking about is this network of geeks would be Not necessarily geeks. People no, with geeks technical skills. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I didn't say it was. Uh, but there's a but in a network of <laughs> What's the difference? <laughs> Creative technical <Package>. people. <laughs> <laughs> so these networks that exist, especially in Santa Cruz, mm -hmm. would be interested in self-populating some of those skills. If we can produce an API which will encourage them to upload information, and if we pre-populate it, as you do, with enough to make that connection valuable yeah, right. yeah. from day one, then I think this will draw people out of the out of the woods. Out of, the, out of the rush, and they will become more more visible, and we will both be aware of their presence, and they will be able to transfer Google. Okay. Right. Is your uh, Santa Cruz Design Innovation Center on behalf of Google? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> that makes sense. Thanks, Chris.